it's it's built out like a display. Yep. This is exactly this is for you is. to display your cool kit. It is the phone booth with the bat costume in it. Hey everybody, welcome to Whiskey Lead and Steel, feeling shirt while you wait. I'm Rick Sutton. Joining me today is Lee Curling. Um, and we're gonna kind of go off the rails a little bit, have a quick chat. We we started talking about this and we started chuckling and we thought you guys should share in this. So one of the things that we want to talk about is what does your gear or your equipment say about you and then how you display that and how you go about with your gear and what you do with that. Um, there's likely to be some feelings hurt on this. It's not intended to hurt your feelings, but you know, hey, if, if, you, if you don't like to go to the gym, you don't like to go to the gym, just say you don't like to go to the gym. Don't make excuses. So I'm going to throw this one out. So Lee, I saw an advertisement the other day for a really cool gear rack where you put your helmet and your body armor and your gun belt and all that other shit um, in your man cave. Um, I know you had one made out of two by fours when you were downrange so that your gear would air out and, and not smell like ass all the time. Um, and I had, I had similar kind of stuff um, in the back of my truck so that mm -hmm. when I get done training, I can throw my stuff in my Jeep and go about my business. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? What's your viewpoint on these, um, these, for lack of a better phrase, display model racks for the folks who are going out and buying this gear? Do you know a lot of guys who are on active duty or who are reservists who keep all of their war gear on a display in their garage as opposed to in a sea bag? No. What are your... What are your thoughts as to why somebody episode, would just... episode, episode over in 30 seconds? <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, so it, it is a good point, right? And anyway, I saw that. I kind of shared it with the group, and <laughs> I, I shared it with um, some pointed thoughts, right? W with that, and um, probably end up sharing those thoughts before this is released on on. Oh, yeah. on, on our Facebook page. Yep. Um, and those are my thoughts. Um, no one else's opinion. No, they're, the, they're probably the, pretty close the, to my the, opinion. The, the opinion expressed here are those of mine and, and do not necessarily represent those of... No, I mean, I'm kidding. So... There's a better than average <laughs> chance. <laughs> but, you know, what, what, you know, what are my thoughts on, on that? So, this is a really nice rack. Yeah. You know, $120, $150 metal rack designed to to display your gear like it's you right so it is helmet your plate carrier your shoulder pads for for plate carrier and then down below that you know a, a natural waist so you can clip your clip your belt to it and it is clearly not not a holy functional rack but more of a display rack and 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 they do they, they they do market it as a display rack and you know they talk about you know their, their, their military and law enforcement and, and then they do talk about this that it's that it's I forget the exact words but but essentially that that the civilian their civilian customers are, are you know Love this, love this rack. Will those be civilian operators? I probably civilian operator. Well, yes, yes, because if you're buying that, you are a civilian operator, civilian operator. right? Because if you're displaying all that, you're not you're 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 calling yourself an operator. But you know, to me, it is a it's it's a to one end, right? It's not functional to grab and go gear. I was gonna say it doesn't sound to me like it's easy to grab. No, like, not, like if you're going out the not, door and grabbing your shit. Yeah, it's it's, it's not a, you know to me this isn't a grab and go type of thing. And and you're right, right? Downrange, you get a couple two by fours, you know, a couple screws, build myself a you know a a gear tree so I can throw my helmet and my my uh, my IBA you know on, mm -hmm. on that, keep it you know off the ground, let it air yeah. as you said air out right because keep the fucking scorpions it, out of it. <laughs> nasty. Right, but it was made that it was everything was short enough that I could I could grab that and 
and my ID on and my, my helmet on in short order and, and go. Yeah. Um, but again, that was different, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's downrange. That was, <laughs> that was yep. the, the, there, there, there were, there were emergent needs at times, mm-hmm. right? To, to, to grab that. Yeah. Um, generally not in your man cave. No. Nah. But what are we saying about ourselves to go, hey, I was never in the military, but I've got this cool Mitch helmet with the with with a a mic a mic boom set up and, and I got this this cool plate carrier and and, and and here's my tactical rig and I need to display this in, in my, my man cave. Right? What are what are we projecting about ourselves? It's a men is a rhetorical question. Although I'm sure you might want to answer it, at, at which point feelings will get hurt. But yeah, you know, I I never felt the need to to display any of my military war fighting gear like that. Huh. Now I, I will say, earlier we we you know, we started kind of down this discussion. My my wife pointed out that that I do have one of every uniform that I wore because mm-hmm. I was around for a long time. Yep. Right. You know, that, that's, that's kind of, kind of, yeah. you know, hanging up in a closet. Right. So, you know, for my, closet. Hang, it, it is hanging in a well, closet. Well, you have to go and, and, and mm-hmm. specifically go down, open up the door to be able to right. see it. And sure. it's not and something that you even take people to go look at either. It's just there for you. But, but, but I will say this. Mm-hmm. So years ago I started this pr- process and then, I moved to this house where I don't have the ability to do it. I had in my old house at Fordyce, mm-hmm. I had the room above the garage. Mm-hmm. I had already, I designed out the plans and what I wanted to do. And I was in the process of, of acquiring this cause I'm a history buff. So I wanted a period specific uniform item to go along with the period specific general issue long arm for mm-hmm. the Marine Corps, starting with the Craig Jorgensen and working its way forward. And I was going to build a backlighted, like a museum grade cabinet in my office. So you would have, you know, a, a, you'd have a, a 19, uh, you'd have a, a, a Springfield and then you'd have a Garand or a Thompson and then, you know, mm-hmm. an M14 along with, you know, a, a piss pot from Vietnam an mm-hmm. old flak vest and then, you know, uh, an M16A1. And, mm-hmm. you know, a horse blanket overcoat from the Marine Corps. And then it, it, an Am- uh, M16A2, something like that. All of the stuff that from the relatively modern, but displayed as a museum piece. Mm-hmm. Right. Not like, as a... What's your reasoning for yeah, it? Was it's it, because it's a history yeah, piece. Yeah, it's a history museum you're piece. you're in. You're not saying you wore it. Yeah. You're not going out and wearing it in public. Yeah. You're not going I'm out not and, LARPing in this you're shit. You're not mm-hmm. making it sound Which like could. you I could. Well, I, I could. You wore it at some point in time yep. to do something. Yep. With yeah. It. So in, you know, it, it, so it's 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 you were doing it strictly as your interest in history, mm-hmm. your interest to see that stuff because mm-hmm. it's something that would have yeah. been a pleasant thing for you to look at in yeah. your office. I mean, yep. we all decorate our, our, our work in living spaces for things. Yes, you can put your stuff here. So, but it all had, it was a, a historical context, not mm-hmm. a, Look how I cool did I am. this or how cool I am. This is, I mean, we have a friend who does the same thing at his place that well, truth up, in, to, up in, truth to tell though, was one of our groomsmen. Oh yeah, right, right. Oh, absolutely, right, absolutely. Who does the yeah. same type of thing, mm-hmm. usually with knives and such. Right, right. He he collected bayonets, did a mm-hmm. bunch of archaeology, yeah. has bayonets from all over the world through all kinds of time frames, has them all displayed out. Mm-hmm. But it, that is his col- that is a collection, collection right? That is, so but I, but I'll say this when we were talking about this. So if you had, as an example, if you had the cover cap, sorry, patrol cap. That's what they call the army. If you had the patrol cap uh, and the bayonet and a, a cami blouse from your deployment mm-hmm. for Desert Storm, 
hung on the wall in the bar. And you had your, your load-bearing belt and a mag pouch and your patrol cap from your first trip to Iraq on the wall in your bar. That shit that you had, that shit that you mm -hmm. earned, I get that. As an example, I have a couple of magazines that I carried in Kuwait, right? That's your stuff. You mm -hmm. use that stuff. You deployed with that stuff. That's different than I never was in the military or law enforcement. And I went up to fucking GI Joe's and I dropped a bunch of money on a bunch of kit. Mm -hmm. And then I cleaned it up and I wore it around the neighborhood or I wore it to a class or I wore it. I wore it someplace where there's no way in hell I have ever or ever will utilize this stuff the way it was designed mm -hmm. at that stage of the game. You are a kid dressing up for Halloween, like Amy said. Mm -hmm. And as you had said, hey, if you want to go to the if you want to go to the Renaissance Fair and be in character and dress up like Lord Haldidart or whatever the fuck you want to be, and you're there playing a part, I think that is different. And I don't find that offensive. But I do find people who make themselves out to look like they are something that they could have done, mm -hmm. but elected never to do. Mm -hmm. But then they brought in all the trappings so that they would look cool about it. Mm -hmm. I kind of find that offensive. Um, kind of like um, great movie with fucking Robert Redford and um, James Gandolfini, The Last Castle. You know, where you've got the, the fucking general who's now at the stockade mm -hmm. and he's there as a prisoner and he's got the stockade commander who's never been anywhere. But he's got all these cool trinkets and shit. And the general's like, yeah, that's that's not a cool thing. That's a mini ball. That's just something that killed some poor dumb son of a bitch. Right. Whole different perspective. Right. You know, and you got a right to be what you want to be, but mm -hmm. I got a right to find that you're a fucking tool if, if that's the kind of shit you're doing. Truth to tell. And this is where the feelings get hurt. Sorry. So let me... No, no. No, no, but... No, but... Yeah, but I, don't, I, don't know. I, I think when you when you... When you go down that road, it, again, same, same thing. I have, um, I have my steel pot mm -hmm. because when we got Kevlar's, the army never wanted my steel pot back. That's right. Right, because because why would they? That's right. You just I, put it put it in a fucking landfill. Well, well same thing. I, I have my I have my leather forty five holster. Yeah. Right, because when we got M nines, the fit. army. Didn't want my leather holster back. At one point, the supply sergeant was like, "Why do you still have that?" Right? It was, you know, it was, it was in my gear bag. Right? We were doing a, a TA fifty, yeah. right? TA fifty shakedown. And um, why do you even have that? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know. I don't see you sign for it because it's it's not here anymore. He's like, I stopped tracking that like three years ago. <laughs> Say, that shit ain't on an ECR card. That's right. It's yours. It's like we don't care about that. Um, but I've, I've got Kevlar helmet. Mm -hmm. I've got an ACH, right? So, so I, yeah, I have a, a helmet from mm -hmm. every, you know, of, of yeah. every type that, that I had, yep. right? When I was in the military. Um, but it's, yeah. I, but you're, but you're not displaying that shit like you're but, Batman getting ready to put your bat suit on and go out. Yeah. And, but on the other hand, if you did, well, you used to be Batman, so that's actually acceptable. Again, I think I think I think it gets it gets into the you know, poser. Well, the statement here is, you know, what does your equipment say about you, right? And yeah, and, and well, I think that the title of this, you know, maybe a little bit misleading for for where we were going to go with this, right? But it is, you know, what you're displaying and mm -hmm. what you have mm -hmm. and what you're wearing. Yeah, what does it really say? About and and, it, and the question becomes: Are you projecting what you want to project, mm -hmm. uh, or are you projecting something else? Yeah. Because quite honest, quite honestly, if you were never in the military, I'm gonna even say, if you were in the military, 
many of the people that we see that are dressing up more or less LARPing different places, and they're not necessarily, you know, at any of our matches or, you know, but some of the other, other people are laughing at you. Yeah. Yep. They may not laugh at you with your face, but they're going, and that's a freaking poser right there. Yep. You are, you are wearing all the kit, you're mm -hmm. wearing all the gear, but we know you may, you may get beginning over on some people. Yeah. But most of us know. Mm -hmm. And, and I said it earlier, you are not training to, to fight off the North Korean airborne. That's, yeah. that's going to go take over the country. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. And Red Dawn phase two. Right. Yeah. You might've been, you might've been training in the eighties for, you know, for the Russians. Yeah. Right. But, but you're, you're not, you're not training for nah. that. You're, you're nope. just trying to look cool. Nope. And deep down, I have no problem with you buying what you want to buy, wearing what you want to wear, displaying it however you want. But when it really comes down to it, you know, are you honest with yourself? Yeah. It's right. free country, you know, and yeah, it, absolutely. And if, and if you are, if you're convincing yourself that you're something that you're not, then that's an issue. But but getting back to the the original line on the on mm -hmm. the uh, uh, title of this, so when we start talking about what does your equipment say about you, so the mm -hmm. big thing that I found with that was um, when you start looking at your equipment, everything at some stage of the game becomes mission specific, mission oriented, right? So as an example, if I am if I if I'm carrying a gun for self-defense purposes as a civilian we've already gone down the road about carrying that gun in open carry so but i've decided i'm gonna i'm gonna carry open carry because the law says i can open carry mm -hmm. and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna carry a 454 casal revolver with a with a strap over the uh strap over the hammer snap down jordan style holster open carry and i'm going to carry that in case somebody decides to rob me or mug me at lynn haven mall if that's what i'm carrying if that's what you're carrying i've got to ask have you really thought this through right right for starters how fast can you draw your five and a half inch long barreled fucking 454 casual that weighs four pounds and thumb cock it and crank around off and having shot a 454 casual how long is it going to take for your hand to recover so you can fire a secondary round now that said but it's, if you're backpacking in fucking yosemite park or yellowstone where there's fucking grizzly bears hmm your 365 XL is probably not going to do you a lot of fucking good, right? Especially in your inside the waistband holster, because you got to dig through all of your Columbia gear to get to that fucker. So the 454 Casol might be the fucking answer to that. But have you thought this through, or mm -hmm. are you? Well, I want people to notice what I'm carrying because it's not about the functionality; it's about do I look cool doing this? I've gone out and I've bought myself a four thousand dollar staccato and i've put a you know it's got all kinds of anodized shit on it and it's got yeah, a great big funnel mag on it but i'm going to carry this thing concealed carry in an appendix rig and it's this damn big you know um are you are you really doing that is that really mm -hmm. what you or do you want people to accidentally see that you're carrying around this four thousand dollar handgun so people think you yeah, you know, so I mean, it's just, I see that, you know, mm -hmm. if you have done a task analysis and said, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and I have to carry whatever, knife, gun, whatever it is that you're carrying, phone, whatever, if you've thought it through and said, this is what I'm going to carry and this is why I'm going to carry, and what you're carrying makes sense, then what that says to me is you're intelligent and you're serious, and you've thought this through. Mm -hmm. If, however, you have gone out and gotten the most noticeable shit, because what you want to be is seen and recognized, 
then chances are that you really haven't given any thought to your equipment. You probably haven't given any thought to your training, in which case you're a fucking liability. Mm -hmm. Well, thinking of the guy that we saw when we were out to dinner who was open carrying. Yeah, with his mm -hmm. back to the room. back to the room and drinking a drinking beer. beer. Yeah. Right. It's, it was about... It was about him open carrying. Yep. Yes. It was not about safety. It was and, not and about being able to security. Shoot. It was not about being a good steward to the community. It was about, look at me, I have a gun. Yeah. And it was a Glock. So, I mean, it wasn't even a good gun. Dog cough. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then tying in with that, the whole, from my perspective, right? Carry a gun so that, somebody smart told me this one time, I don't carry a gun because I'm scared. I carry a gun so that I don't lose the opportunity to win the gunfight if I get presented with one. Um, but the idea, again, somebody smart said, the best way to handle a gunfight is know where the gunfight's going to be and don't be there. So you don't want to attract the gunfight. You don't want to, you know, do that. You don't want to walk around with a handful of horseshit in your pocket because you'll draw flies. So I see these folks out here with the, the telltale kill them all, let God sort them out, fucking sheepdog. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong if you're proud of what you do, saying what you do. But understand this. If, if you have your car festooned with gun logos and I carry and I'm armed and come take it and sheepdog response and all that other crazy shit. Um, there are people who want to steal your gun. And if it looks like there's probably a gun in your car, then I will break into your car and take it. And or there are assholes out there who think, well, the, the cool thing to do is go out and start an, an argument, start an engagement with one of these people to see if they're for real. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and as we've talked about, I think the, you know, if the most ethical thing about carrying a concealed weapon is nobody knows you have it. Absolutely. Until they see the muzzle flash. Mm -hmm. You know, so why would you, why would you announce it? We, we've talked about why we go back to open carry. You know, you're the first mm -hmm. guy. You're the first guy who gets shot in the robbery if you open carry. Right. Well, and, and you know, to go back to your your statement there, if if you have all of these things on your vehicle that display you are likely armed, the more that you have on your vehicle that displays you are likely armed, I get the I want people to know that I, I support the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. No problem, right? So I'm not saying you shouldn't do this because you should be afraid of someone over here. That's right. But there is the, the more that is there, the more likely it is that when that vehicle has left unattended, whether it is secured and unattended or unsecured and mm -hmm. unattended, that there's a gun in that vehicle. Yep. I'll break the windshield and see if I can find myself a Glock underneath the seat. That's right. Right. Or in the back. Or yep. maybe, maybe if there's a if there's enough uh, enough gun stickers on there God. that that there's that there's there's one of them there scary black rifle. There's a Daniel Defense carbine right. under the back seat. Right. Yeah. So, you know, hey, they're, they're like, they, they, got their, they got their bug out kit in there and there's all kinds of cool stuff mm -hmm. I can take. So, yep. so it does get into the, you know, what are you projecting? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and at the same time, when you get in and talk about, you know, get somebody getting into an argument with you, just because they started the argument doesn't mean you may not be the primary aggressor. Yep. Right? Exactly right. Well, they they said a mean thing to me. Well, that doesn't that does not mean that that makes them the primary aggressor right. when it when you pull your gun out 
Well, they, they said a mean thing to me, so I flipped them off. So they flipped me off. So I told them to fuck themselves. So they got out of their car. So I got out of my car. And then they punched me in the face and knocked me down. And then I was at a position of supreme disadvantage. So I shot them. That scenario will not go well for you. You don't have to participate in the conversation. That's exactly right. It's a, that's a whole different animal than the guy cut me off and I flipped him off. And at the stoplight, he ran over and tried to snatch my car door open. Right. That's a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. right? right? You got to understand the difference of that. And, and what you're talking about. So, and I'm not telling anybody how to live their life for the things that they ought to do, but there are lots of places that even if you have a concealed weapons permit, you're not supposed to carry your gun into like rest stations, right? So if you're in Virginia and you stop at the rest station on 64, cause you got to get rid of some of your Wawa coffee, their policy is, we don't care that you have a concealed weapons permit. You're not supposed to bring a firearm or explosive devices. I found that interesting. Mm -hmm. No supposed to explosive devices into the rest stop. So if you're following the rules, then you have left your gun and your presumably explosive devices in your car. Your explosive devices. Right? So mm -hmm. if, and there are people who do this. I know this because I was a police officer. Um, so if you have all of the, I probably have a gun on me stickers on your car and you're at the Virginia rest stations and you get out and walk in, there's a better than 50% chance that you have complied with the law and you have left your weapon in your vehicle. Now your shit gets stolen. All because you advertise. And or, you know, it, it, it's like the thing we talked about, you know, you get the uh, you get the little stick figure family, mm -hmm. you know, they got the mom and the dad mm -hmm. and, the, and the three girls and the dog and the little boy and the soccer ball and the soccer ball. And, and now you're me. telling everybody this and is me. how many kids I have in the car. My kid's a, my kid's a uh, an honor roll student at yeah. X elementary school. So yeah. Now all, you just told and, where all those kids went to school. Yeah. So you yeah. know, and, and there are creeps and, out there who, who make use of that. Mm hmm. Right. And then this is the dance studio that my daughter goes to. Yeah. And then this is the soccer club my son belongs to. Yeah. And this is the, right, because I've... Yeah, Great Bridge Gymnast Mom. Or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and again, it's it's live, live your life. Yeah. But understand, understand the risk. Yep. Right. I think, I think that becomes the, the thing is everything we do in our life is based on some form of risk modeling. Yep. Right. And if we don't model risk... In our everyday life, then then we're destined to, to, to yep. fail. Yep. And, risk mitigation. And and it's, you know, it, I don't know if I've said this on you know a podcast or you know but but you know in, in some of the the work I've done in the past, right, cybersecurity related type work, it's you know, the Ukraine, you know, the Russians, you know, invaded Ukraine, and then it was the whole Biden administration shields up, and you know the Russians are going to be on the cyber rampage, and I get calls from people going, what should I do? I mean, what should you do? Well, I mean, the... the, the, the you should buy an AR-15. Well, the administration is saying that, you know, the Russians might, might hack us and, and we need them like, do you have complex passwords? Do you do this? Do you do this? Do you, well, yeah, you, you've always said that that's what... Are, are you actively fighting the Russians? No. Do you say... Putin is a commie on the internet? I do. As a hashtag? I do. No? I do. Okay. Putin's do commie. you say Putin drives a lime green Fiero on the internet? N no. Th then you know what? The Russians don't care about you. That's right. Are you, if, if in your world, why would the Russians care about you? That's right. right. You're, you are no longer in, in the military. You are no longer in law enforcement. You, you're just John Q citizen randomly out there and you have no exposure to, to anything in which yep. the Russians are going to go, we should target Bob. That's right. Why? Right? That's right. They may target you within their, their information. Campaign. Yeah. Cause they want to steal your shit. Well, no, but they, well, they, they, right. The Russians 
conduct psychological operations. And I know people want to say they don't, but they have been conducting psychological operations. That is fact. And it is across the all of America. Mm -hmm. It is not against one side or the other. Yep. It is de it is designed to create a divisiveness. Yep. Right. But all the cybersecurity hygiene in the world is not going to affect that. But you, as a sp individual target, flip that back into saying: mm -hmm. Is risk modeling in your life mm -hmm. should go along those same lines? Yes. Like, what are you projecting? to some to to some bad person that yep. might be out there right and again whether it, it relates to your gun stickers on your car the family stick figures on your car you know those things in your life that, that you go this this creates a, a potential mm -hmm. risk yep you know answering the facebook questions of you know um what street did you grow up on what's your mother's maiden name uh what was the, what was your first car uh, where did you meet your spouse? Um, hey, play this game and you can figure out your freaking fairy name, which consists of, you know, your, your combine all of these things from your birth date and then give us the key to decode what your birth date is. All of those are security questions, mm -hmm. right? So it, it gets into understanding where risk is mm -hmm. and then living your life within, within yep. that risk. Yeah, exactly right had a conversation with somebody in the last couple of weeks, I can secure your computer. I can prevent your computer from being hacked. I can burglar proof your house. We can unplug, yeah, that's right. I can unplug your computer. Don't ever let it touch the internet. It is completely not useful for you to do the things you want to do, yep. but I've reduced and I've, I've mitigated the risk yep. of using that. And you say, how you will burglar proof a house because I, I, so I've here, heard this before. Here's how you burglar proof a house, any building, realistically. If you any actually building. want to make it completely burglar proof, this is realistically, this is the only way to do it. And I investigated burglaries for like 10 years. So, what you do is you cut a hole in the roof and then you get a big funnel and you pour wet concrete in through the hole in the roof until the entire structure is full of concrete and then you let it set up. And now that building is burgle proof. Anything else, you will not be burgle proof. If you can get in, it's burglarable. Right. Fort Knox can be burgled. Right. Right. The, the Supermax in Colorado could be burgled. It's all about risk mitigation. And it's funny, you, you talk about, you know, put this out there, put that out there, and this is why people know things. So my old writing partner, Joel, Mm -hmm. He made a he made a observation one day, and I had to chuckle. So Joel goes, he goes, you know, stereotypes do not happen in a vacuum. And I was like, absolutely. And he goes, I think, as a police officer, it should be acceptable if you're a white guy with dreads, wearing a Bob Marley shirt, the police should just be allowed to stop you. Because, in his experience, every single person professionally that he came in contact that matched that description had weed on them. I was like, I, I can't argue. You know, when I was in robbery, um, if we went to your house and your house had been um, the, the, the subject of a, uh, of a home invasion robbery, and I came into your house and there was a picture on your wall of Al Pacino from Scarface. Yeah. You, your house was robbed because there was there was dope and money in it. Uh -huh. I promise you. Right. 100% of the time. Absolutely. So what what you're putting out there is yeah, yeah, you're you're advertising something some way or the other. So mm -hmm. just be mindful of what it is that you're advertising. Are you advertising that you are a poser? Or are you advertising that you're armed to the teeth and you want people to steal all your shit? Live your life the way you want to live. Mm -hmm. Have your have your political slogans. God knows I, my oldest Jeep. I, I had a Jeep years ago that I had all the don't trust the government. I don't trust the government. All the all those bumper stickers on there. I didn't have a lot of stuff that led people to believe that I had a gun on me. But, you know, you're going to extrapolate, oh, this guy is somewhere to the right of Ronald Reagan. There's a better than average chance that he's got a gun. 
but I don't leave my guns in my car. I carry my gun with me all the time. Um, yeah, so what does your equipment say about you? What are your bumper stickers say about you? What kind of risk does that provide for you? Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that the little stick figure family things where they're being attacked by a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh -huh. or a TIE fighter, mm -hmm. those are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I like the one when nobody cares. Or the one with the, the guy with the mask and the chainsaw. Jason, that's, I find that hilarious. Mm -hmm. They need one of like Bo Katan attacking somebody. Or just they, Bo Katan. They, they, I think they have that. They do have a whole Mandalorian thing. Because yeah. Disney's going to make money. Whatever Disney can make money. And Disney's figure out how to make Bo -Katan. money. Bo Katan. Yeah. You need a mashup of Bo Katan and Leia. From Return of the Jedi. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so what did your gear Box say about up. you? Yeah, what did your gear say about you? And then we kind of flipped into kind of a whole OPSEC mm -hmm. risk. What are you projecting? Type of thing, which is yeah. yeah well, there's some some intersection there. What, but yeah, what does your gear say about you? What do your bumper stickers say about you? If you have a great big Ruger Ruger Hawk on your car, yeah, says that you probably have a stainless steel single action in there, <laughs> or a really or or a semi-automatic that is uglier and clunkier than a Glock. Yeah, I have a sticker that says, "Let's get lost." Nice. Yeah, well, that's a hiking sticker. Yeah, and yeah. then and then I have a really really old school. MP sticker. Oh yeah. But nobody knows what that is mm -mm. unless you were an MP in the in the nineteen eighties. Yeah. Right, because it was a, it was a almost a, a Kilroy esque kind yeah. of kind of oversized helmet and yeah. You look at it, you don't yeah. Yep. You, you don't you don't know what it is unless mm -hmm. you know what it is. Type yeah. Of thing. yeah. 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 Like I like I got a I got a bumper sticker for I think Steuben Saddles and. One for American Riding Instructor Association. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything that has anything with guns anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't even, I'm probably the only jarhead on the planet who doesn't have an EGA on his car someplace. But I make up for it. I've got one on the truck and I've got a couple you of them on the motorcycle. all over everything else. Oh yeah, all over mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you do. It's our, it's our cult. I mean, yeah. In fact, it's like forehead, you know, it's tattooed on every every jarhead's you know, forehead. I mean, that, that's, that's right. right. Oh, right. oh, 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 left or something, yeah. Neck dancers. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Somebody's doing right. that shit. Yeah. All right. So. Ah, no rocks, bottles, bombs, or hand grenades. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you found it uh, entertaining, informational. Um, if your feelings got hurt, well, then that's what the fuck you get for. Leave us a mean comment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leave us a comment. And if there's anything that you want to see us talk about, good, bad, or indifferent. Send it to info at agdefsol.com. Um, and if you haven't already told both of the friends that you have that you, that, about whiskey, lead, and steel, then I don't know what you're, you're wrong. doing with your life. Yeah, you're wrong. Then you're probably then you're probably not enjoying Taco Tuesday either. Sock monkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll catch you next week. See you later. Put your helmet on it. And then you put your your Plate oh, carrier, plate, plate carrier. carrier, and then it, and then down at the waist level, it's got a built-out waist so you can put your belt, belt around it. So you display your gear as if you're wearing as it. if you're wearing it, like it's a it's an like, armor tray. So so like it's a mannequin.